focused? Focused. Okay. Welcome to day two of Comic Con. It is Friday. Let's do it. Well, I think um, what Chris touched upon when he says finding your tribe, that's essentially how Black Prime Nerd started. Um, I was on Google back on February of 2012 and just wanted to find a space on the internet where there were women that looked like me that was into the same things that I was into. Um, nerd culture was very popular at the time and shows like Big Bang Theory was like the number one show on television, but you didn't really see black women in those spaces. Um, and I Googled black girl nerds and nothing came up, uh, which was pretty remarkable. And even using the Google image search and typing in black girl nerds and just seeing white women with glasses with black frames. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a unicorn, I don't exist. <laughs> um, so, so that was a part of just trying to find my tribe. So I just decided to indelibly print the term on the web by um, creating the blog page. And that organically evolved into something even bigger than what I had ever expected because it started off with just me and my personal musings about just random things that I'm interested in. And then people who Again, these marginalized women, underserved communities that have never had a chance to express themselves were excited to see a page called Black Girl Nurse. Oh, that's me too, I wanna to contribute. And, and that's how it was able to develop. So I think it's very important that, um, you know, the finding of your tribe helps because it can essentially grow into a brand of its own and, and BGN without me even realizing it because again, I really wanted to see women like me um, I was able to bring it into a brand and, and get recognized by TV stars and TV showrunners like Shonda Rhimes, who was like, I'm a black girl nerd too, and you would never know that she's a black girl nerd um, because of BGN. So it's, it's, it's pretty awesome to be able to kind of notice these things and stumble onto these pretty remarkable experiences because of me just trying to fill a need. Okay, so to build a following really simply, um, you can have a maximum, you can follow a maximum of 2,000 people only, and you, so, and you can't follow more people that are following you. Uh, no, not the day, the day, the limit is between 500 and 900, and the limit is arbitrary. So what you do is find someone that you think, you take your Twitter account, and I'm gonna follow people, let's say from Bat Chris Gore, I'm gonna follow people that are already following Batman v Superman Twitter account. I'm gonna follow 500 a day, right? I'm gonna do that every day until I reach my maximum of 2,000, then I'm gonna unfollow the people that didn't follow me back. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process for one month. So you're following, unfollowing, following, unfollowing. But as you're doing that, the graph, the scale goes up and in one month you'll have 2,000 followers. You also have to be tweeting I think three to four times a day. That's something that's unique to what it is, whether it's are you a food blog, are you blogging about a particular TV show, or is it Game of Thrones fan Twitter feed? The Twitter the feed itself should actually be like think of it as like a, a slate of, you know, some sort of entertainment, right? And then just follow the people that would also be your audience. Find someone who's got a half million or a million followers, and then you'll you'll see you'll see those follow backs. Yeah. So um, and the other unique thing that's good about people when you're following people and they're following you back, you can message each other So uh, on that. So that's how you do it, and it takes about a month and it's annoying. There's all kinds of apps on the phone that you can get. There's like follow on follow, just on follow, there's Crowdfire. I use them all, and none of them, I, wouldn't, I can't endorse any single one because they all do something different well. I can't find further than Jeff and Christine already left for the day, and it's like one o'clock. So last year I came to Comic Con to see the Orphan Black uh, panel and basically went straight into the room two panels ahead of time. This year the line is about around 200 people long in order to get into the panel before Orphan Black. So we'll see if we even get it. Come down to this and the crop on screen. I'm wearing a shirt on my head. I'll try to beat the heat. I did get in touch with Bridget and Jeff though, and they are on their way over to get in line with me right now. Thank God. But I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stand. My shoes are black and they're absorbing all the heat. I could take them off. We're at Brown 
shoeless clothing, maybe that. So the line for Orphan is insane right now. We're sweating and we've asked multiple people who work here if there's any chance of us getting in and they're all kind of like, The line's moving. No. Oh, the line's moving. Oh, <laughs> did you see that? The line moved three feet. It starts at 70 minutes. It starts at 4.30. We made some friends while we were in line. <laughs> Say hi. hi. What's your name? Evan. Evan. Oh, hi, Evan. <laughs> yeah, and some other guys that left because they gave up. They were dressed like Sailor Moon characters, though, and they were amazing. Yeah, they were because they were very burly and hairy. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna. We're gonna wait like a few minutes and. If we don't move up to the next level, it's like a video game, then we quit and we're gonna be really we're sad. We're at level three, I think. Or four? Are we three or four? We're three. You guys, we might actually have a chance. We made it under the canopy and now we have to wait for the next panel to end. No, or at least under some shade. They said there's a, there's a maybe. We have a maybe now. Not a no, not a hard no, just a maybe. Which is good. So we actually got into the Orphan Black panel somehow, some way. I don't know how it happened, but we did it. And I filmed the entire thing because I'm batshit crazy apparently. So uh, I'm gonna show you a little clip of it and then I'm gonna upload a video of the entire panel uh, in a little while and link to it in the description or here, here too. So that's happening. That was insane. Oh, and it was an amazing panel. And it was hilarious. And Tatiana did impressions of all the clones. It was super cool. I'm stoked. Be me. Um, so now I like I can get like, oh, that one's me. That's my hand. And um, it's more the the amusement of my family. Where they're like, that's you. I can tell that's you from behind. Or that's yeah, that's the back of your head. And so that's that's kind of fun. But it's so seamless. It's great. So, uh, in the final episode of season four, a lot happened, which we should unpack. First of all, we saw it in that uh, clip package, uh, Tatiana, because Cosima is finally reunited with Delphine, which... Uh, <laughs> you guys seem to be on your way to making sweet love. Yeah. Sweet, sick love, though. Cosima's so ill. She's so ill, can't she? Do you, do you have an opinion on whether she was able to do it? I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure she got it up. I'm sure she got it up. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't seen her. She thought she was dead. I mean... Yeah, I mean, oh. love will find a way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is Helena with Alexis. They are ordering and they're deciding what appetizers to order at a TGI Fridays. <laughs> If you don't watch your back, you will be appetizer. I am appetizing. I'm sorry, I still can't hear you. <laughs> can't hear anything you're saying. Hi everyone, and that is it for Friday's Comic Con vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I just wrapped up an interview with Chelsea Steiner who writes for After Ellen and was featured in my last Comic-Con vlog uh, doing the rant about the 100. So uh, I had her over to do an interview on uh, queer media so that will be posted in the near future as soon as I can get that up. And other than that, please like this video if you enjoyed this episode and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more Comic-Con vlogs and other geeky things that I tend to do. So have a great day everyone and I will talk to you tomorrow. Welcome to day one of Comic-Con. Ta-da! Ta-da! I entered the artist gallery on accident, but I want to go find Orphan Black memorabilia, so that's where I'm going. Look, it's Chewbacca.